Good evening. Here I am again for part three of Como Rebbe by Clays. Playing through the demo so far. And in this playthrough, my goal is to my goal is to get as close to the characters as possible, but also to stir up as much um, as much drama as possible. To be the most mentally disturbed character I can be. Um, it's a very deep story so far. It, it, it is very serious. Um, I kind of regret not doing a more serious playthrough, um, but I feel like after I made my first choice or two, I had to stick with the path. So, we're going full steam ahead. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm trying to inter intersperse these. Let me go for another... Experience supplemental fragment. Pre-game plans. Pre-game plans. Another supplemental fragment. Here we go. Question. Potential answer. <laughs> you all down to pregame before the nightclub? I'd like you even had to ask. Yeah, I feel like it was assumed that was going to happen. Oh, that that might have been a conversation that took place IRL, and if we're trying to stitch together these different memory fragments, it's possible that that these are um, out of order. Enough. Taylor? <laughs> Absolutely. And Taylor is down. Delta. Of course. Full send. Love to hear it. I'll pick up a few things. Any suggestions? As we've already found out, junk food is like the number one pregame item <laughs> with this group. Vodka. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> Cranberry juice. Orange juice. Gosh. So much so much chaos in the group chat. Whoa! Slow down! Remember, all the drinks at the club are covered. There's no need to be extravagant here. Sheesh. Isaac, this is an excuse to be as extravagant as possible. If we were paying for both, we'd all be broke when we got home. Oh my gosh. Let's splurge at least a little bit. If the bar is covered, we can pregame like royalty. That is such an odd way to justify wasting money. I don't know, Isaac. He has a point. He does have a point. You're hyping this up to be the best night ever. Do you want to remember it as the time we held back for no reason? It's not holding back, it's saving money. And I never said it'd be the best night ever. I only promised fun. If you fall victim to your own expectations, that's all on you. He has a point. You said we might be on the news. Oh my gosh, they're not gonna let this you die. You said we have access to an open bar. Exactly. Tons of fun. Buzzkill. Hold on, I wasn't finished yet. As much as I want to save money, you do have a point. We're lucky. We know in advance that this night will be memorable. That's a luxury we shouldn't waste. So, let's do our best to make it even more memorable. Now you're talking, and I like what I hear. Where'd this man of wisdom come from, and what did he do with Isaac? I'm growing. Truly heartwarming. Oh my gosh. I party only on rare occasions, but I find it a little weird that I found I find it a little weird to consider a night memorable when you know it's going to be in a place where you've never been before. But surprises like surprises can be fun. Experience pivotal fragment locked out. Oh no.
The safety of the past is the greatest treasure that we can never possess. Ah, this is, looks like the scene that was, um, someone posted this scene. It might have been Clay's himself, or, or on a Kickstarter. We leave the grocery store, our hands full of bags. It was mostly booze and the sort of junk food. You know, the usual. It took a couple hours, but Isaac and Taylor were there to make it easier. That's everything, yeah? So, Dante made the list, though. I'll just blame him if we forget anything. Ah, classy. <laughs> Dante made the list, so blame him if they forgot anything. Isaac walks over to the driver's side door and tries to open it. A moment later, he looks up, giving us an embarrassed smile. Oh, uh... Speaking of classy, please don't hate me for this. Oh, Isaac, you didn't. I did. Oh, man. Taylor groans and places his bags on the ground. I'm a little confused, but I quickly realize what's going on. Isaac locked his keys in the car. I guess we're stuck. You insisted on using this dated piece of junk. If you had more refined taste, you could just whip out your phone. I understand this scene now because Isaac is the one who would not have, um, who would not have a car that can be unlocked remotely. Of course, he would use keys, mechanical keys, to mechanically unlock his car. I do have refined or taste. Possibly and a fob. It's not dated. It's. Vintage. Um, vintage. It's sketchy is what it is. <laughs> sketchy. You say that, but you'll thank me for having it one day. Oh, oh yes, of course. I'm so grateful that you stranded us in the middle of the city. But that day is not today. Taylor sighs, his annoyance almost exaggerated. <sighs> well, looks like we're walking. This is Isaac's mess. Let him stay and fix it. Nah, I'm actually gonna walk with you. I'll have to grab some tools from my workshop. Thankfully, this isn't the first time I've locked myself out. Oh, that kind of makes sense. You wouldn't be able to call, um... Uh... A locksmith or a tow truck in this day and age? If everyone is expected to have a smart vehicle? Thankfully? He has to get tools from his workshop. Yeah, always makes a good story to tell. <laughs> that is the best way to spin your your worst mistakes. Just make it into a good story. Why not just get a new car? You know, one that follows regulations. Because I'm just made of money. Yeah. He scoffs and walks back toward us. Taylor picks up his bags, and we start walking in the right direction. With all this added weight, it'd take a couple hours to get back home. Oh, not fun. Not fun. I guess I'm coming over to your place now. Good thing I didn't have a stream plan today. <laughs> Good thing you didn't have a stream plan today. Or tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, I'm taking the weekend off for you. <laughs> I don't get to do that very often. <laughs> it's costly. But, in my heart, I know that this open bar is compensation enough. I understand a little more. Now, now given the context, I understand that Taylor is taking the weekend off for Isaac's plans. When I first saw the scene, I thought he was referring to me. <laughs> Which... He does have a very cute grin, uh, Taylor does, when he says that, but, but I can tell that Taylor and Isaac um, are strictly friends here. You get drunk after one cocktail. Oh, I plan on going farther than that. <laughs> oh my you gosh. You want to make the night memorable, right? 
the marker of a memorable night is not remembering it at all. When the lightweight decides to <laughs> decides to go all in. Oh, so you're an alcoholic alcoholic. Says the guy who drinks beer at lunchtime. Day drinking is better. Oh, I can't wait to hear the explanation on that one. Before they can continue talking, we almost bump into somebody. Quickly dodging to the side, we turn back and apologize. No! Oh, sorry about that. Oh, who's this? Don't worry about it. Who is this? Say, that's, that's a lot of food. I suppose oh, it is. Oh, the saxophone! Are you gonna eat it all? <laughs> uh, that's what you do with food, yeah? What does he mean by that? Oh. We exchange glances as concern rises within us. Hey, everything all right? Yeah, just really hungry. Oh. Can't you go buy some food for yourself? He slaps his hands on his pants pocket as if looking for something. A clearly comedic gesture, as we can now tell, he's carrying nothing with him. I guess I forgot my wallet at home. Your phone, too? My, my what? We exchange glances once again as we start to understand. Is he a zero? One of these zeros we've been hearing about? Oh, you're zero. Call it. Not even. That's terrible. He doesn't even have a phone, and they still track his score. That's what they've been calling me, yeah. My friends are here to protest. I just wanted to see the city. Didn't pack enough, though, and now this walking has me stopped. We huddle together and start whispering amongst ourselves. What do we do? <laughs> Group huddle. Beats me. I haven't even met a zero before. Are we going to lose points if we keep talking to him? Dude, he's a person, not a liability. Of course, of course. I can hear you. <laughs> Taylor has a good heart. He's... Oh my gosh. It's, it's easy to assume things about people because of... Um because of what they what they do for a living. Like, it's easy to assume that a celebrity personality, such as a streamer, would um, be more concerned about liability. But Taylor has a good heart. Isaac and Taylor look scared to stiff. To break the awkward silence, I grab an apple from Taylor's bag. Holding it out towards the zero, I make it clear that it now belongs to him. No joke? I shake my head and apologize on behalf of Isaac and Taylor. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I'm just not used to seeing, you know, zeros in the city. Can we, like, can we stop calling him a zero? Or well, anywhere, for that matter. You and your friends are making history. If you say so. He steps forward and grabs the apple out of my hand. Uh, what do they call you? I tell him my name is Delta, and introduce him to Isaac and Taylor. Delta, huh? So I guess you're the cool one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, the one with the edgiest name. With a smile, he takes a bite of the apple and walks away. We wait until he's out of earshot before talking about what happened. I'm totally cool. What was he talking about? Yeah, the definition of cool. Walking around in a jacket that's three sizes too big. I'm growing into it. I've I've worn a jacket too big for me. For for a good number of years. And I have to say, Isaac's jacket does not look too big for him. <laughs> 
He's growing into it. More like filling it out with all that junk food you've been eating. Anyway, let's keep going. Hopefully that was our only distraction. Is Taylor the one that Isaac said was making fun of his weight? Wait, I'm actually kind of concerned. Trust me, Isaac, it's nothing to worry about. Totally normal to be concerned with your weight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, you idiot, it's the zero. He said he wanted to see the city. I have ears. But that means he's never seen it before. He's one of the zeros that was born on a colony. A colony? And? He never got a chance to say no to the system. He must have had ideals forced on him by mom and dad. Fascinating. I thought, I thought we all had no chance to say no to the system, but... Huh. Must have had ideals forced onto him by his mother and father from being born in a colony. Oh, I see what you mean. At least we get to choose. Shouldn't he, too? You know what? Never mind. This is getting too deep for me. Yeah, sounds about right. You're more of a drinker than a thinker. Guess I had my work cut out for me, then. He laughs and shakes his bag slightly. Bottles of alcohol shake around, knocking into one another. As we make our way home, I can't help but feel sorry for that zero, too. Everybody should get a chance to start fresh. Just like I did. I was going to have thoughts, but the thoughts disappeared. On to the next fragment. Experience supplemental fragment. The quantum leap. Just looking at these, um, these portraits. We got we got a um, a heart to heart with Taylor that has yet to be unlocked. Hopefully, it will be unlocked soon. I'm wondering, wondering if that will depend on my choices. But maybe they stay locked because they do need to be played after specific fragments have already been passed. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't have a heart-to-heart -heart with Taylor if you hadn't even met him yet. Which, we hadn't met him at the beginning of the game. Um, but yeah. I'm really hoping that all three of those get unlocked. The Quantum Leap. Here we go. Does anyone, does anyone actually leave their phone on, um, on Ringer, like, when they sleep? I, I value my sleep. I know we're all focused on the nightclub thing lately, but did any of you start to think about New Year's Eve? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, you, you can't, you can't really have two big old bangers right next to each other. One thing at a time, man. No, I, I have a good idea, so... Hear me out. We're gonna do the quantum leap. The quantum leap. I mean, it is good to plan. It's good to. It is good to plan and have have perspective, long term perspective. The what? What? The, the time warp? Now you're just putting random words. In. <laughs> it, it's a thing. I swear. Never heard of it. All right. All right. Listen up. You gather friends in a voice call, all from different time zones. You take a shot at midnight. Take another shot at midnight. Then another. See where I'm going with this? Go for I have to admit, it's kind of... It's... It's, it's, it's ingenious. 
But we're all in the same time zone. Whoa. Multiple midnights. The best part of New Year's Eve over and over. And also... I feel like that's a great recipe for getting bored. You have to you have to have at least three different time zones represented, right? Which means you have a party spanning over multiple over two hours. You've gotta find something to do. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. If you're using time zones to promote alcohol abuse? Wonderful. It's not abuse. Don't lie to us, Isaac. We all know you'd be drinking that much anyway. You'll need a bit more than that to sell me on the idea. Well, think about it this way. If you have multiple crushes, then that's multiple midnight kisses. <gasps> Sold. Wait, what? <laughs> who, who, who are you planning to kiss at midnight? Let alone 40 <laughs> I'm with Dante here. Like, how in the world does that get you sold on this idea? It's a surprise! Don't even worry about it. Just so you know, if you come near me, I will destroy you. This is gonna be such a disaster. And again, all of us are in the same time zone. Doesn't make sense. Uh... This one next. Experience pivotal fragment. Another session. Another session. So, everybody deserves a chance to start fresh. Even you. So, so as, as we've been able to gather, all the fragments so far have taken place within the span of one or two weeks leading up to this one big weekend that Isaac has been promising us. Um, so it makes sense that there is a session with the counselor and it's... If these fragments are in order, then it's probably towards the end of the week. And they do kind of seem to be in order. I would love to do a playthrough where we go through them in reverse order and, and just experience memories from a different from a different perspective um, but that's the that's the picture that I'm putting together here the counselor stares at me like he's unsure of what to say a few sheets of paper in his hands sporadically divert his attention I can tell he's reading the notes from our previous session our first session we didn't get to cover much ground, but it was still a nice experience. I was worried we wouldn't get along, and that was a bit of a stressor. He seems nice, though, and a lot of my worries have dwindled. Terribly sorry about last time. I hate cutting things short. But when our safety is on the line, I have to make some tough calls. Our safety was on the line? That protest seemed pretty heated. I hope they didn't oh. give you any trouble. Okay. Okay. Reasonable. I shake my head. I had no issues getting home. I don't think the protesters wanted to hurt anybody. They wanted change. Obviously, some would fight for that change. But no hands have been forced yet. Interesting times we live in. Interesting times. Pay a group no mind, and eventually it'll grow unchecked. At this rate, the heads of August might have to get involved. But let's not worry about that right now. We're on the clock. There's a couple of things I wanted to ask you last time, so let's stop there. With how calm it is outside today, I don't think we'll have any issues. Giving him a nod, I lean back in my chair. Always good to, to be relaxed. I really didn't need to be here, but I didn't want to lose points either. It seems like we were in a stalemate, 
until he cleared me as a patient. I only saw my last counselor for so long because it was part of my normal. With a big life change like this, I wanted to leave some of that stuff behind. If he can deem me mentally fit, then I won't have to see him anymore. That could be easy or hard, and it differs from doctor to doctor. But with how, how we're getting along, I think he can tell that I'm doing well. As I've said many times before, my lack of a vision has never held me back. This one is actually a bit atypical, but I'll ask it anyway. As we've already established, you're a bit of a unique case. So, if you had the option to experience a vision, would you? He's really trying to figure out. I know you say you're fine without one, but this is a different angle. Oh yes, and I'm sure as someone without visions that I've been asked this question many times before. If I could offer you a vision of your future, would you take it? Keep in mind that you might not like what you see. Not at all. Now, the thing, the thing that I find a little strange about this is that after all, these visions have been occurring for a hundred for a hundred years now. We know that, that the hundredth anniversary of Komarebi uh, coming into the world recently occurred. We should know by now if these visions are avoidable or if they're fate, if if they are unavoidable. Um, he, he seems to suggest that they are unavoidable. Um, Maybe they are. If they were unavoidable, would I like to see my future? Hmm. I'm, I'm really overthinking this, but if I express that I would like to see my future, that implies <laughs> could come out of um, having uh, being um, being unable to accept or struggling with my lack of visions, which would enable me to continue seeing the counselor more. You see where I'm going with this? Well, let's choose this one. I would I would like to see my future, of course. I see. So you're fine without it but you'd also embrace it. Oh, now that's a fine way to interpret that. That's a double-edged sword, Delta. And it could end up causing more harm than good. But I don't blame you. Deep down, we all want to belong. To be like everybody else. No, I, I feel like he just expressed the pinnacle of, of flexibility. Like being able to accept your current situation, but also being okay with change. I've never found any merit in that, though. Trying to be like other people only makes you forget who you are. True. There's a certain beauty in embracing what makes you special. Oh. There used to be a time when you couldn't do that. At least not without being judged by your peers. When you couldn't when you couldn't embrace what makes you special. Is this... Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm tempted to think that prejudice and judgment are never going to go away. But maybe, maybe this world is a lot more progressive than I thought. Even a few generations ago, Psychics were a laughing stock. But then Komarebi came along and turned the tables for everybody. My point is that society moves on to a new fad almost every other day. Trying to stay current, trying to fit in, is generally a bad idea. That makes sense. Be yourself, Delta. Your time in the spotlight will come eventually. 
took my time in the spotlight. Does everyone, is everyone destined for time in the spotlight? I nod, unsure of where he's going with this. He makes me do that a lot, doesn't he? Regardless of your thoughts right now, in the future, you may feel pressured to fit in. I try and give my patients lessons that they can use for the rest of their lives. So even if I end up clearing you as a patient, you'll be just a tad wiser. You know, when he puts it that way, it sounds kind of cool. I may not need a therapist, but maybe I shouldn't think of him as one. He's like a mentor, an older, wiser person, to teach me valuable lessons. I need a therapist. <laughs> In-game me does not need a therapist, but I need a therapist. As I was saying, Koma Rebi changed the way we see almost everything. We look back on history and see prophets all the time, but we never believe them. Seers, soothsayers, fortune tellers, we see them littered throughout our past. But now, it's impossible to justify our skepticism. In fact, it now seems unreasonable to deny. Is he saying that those people were ridiculed in their time? But now all of that is... normal. So, oh, so that is how fast society has changed and, and moved on to a new normal. Who's to say that Komarebi wasn't gifted to special people in the past? These people throughout the ages could have just been the first to receive it. Yeah, let's go with let's go with some uh, some negativity here. It seems more like a curse, actually. But then you have to ask, where did the Komarebi oh, phenomenon well, it's come? Lost from? on him. Is someone? Or something responsible or is it just random the implications of these visions unsettled almost everybody interesting to know that you think of it as a curse though a lot of people without visions think that they weren't worthy of Komoreni like it's something gifted to people who meet certain conditions that doesn't seem reasonable to me since it's less than 1% who don't have coma ready. It's like it's a really low bar for the qual for, for, for being quote unquote worthy of coma ready. But regardless of where it came from, we have to live with it. You seem to be doing pretty good in a world like this though. You may not fit in, but like I said, you don't need to. No. He smiles softly and places his papers on the stand beside him. I'm a bit of an outlier myself, you know. Oh, really? There's a reason why I counsel people like you, Delta. So when I talk about not having visions, just know that I speak from the heart. A lot of things you feel over your lifetime, I already have. Doubts, fears, depression. There's a lot that could come your way. If I can make it easier on you, then I consider all of this a success. Thank you. Whoa. So he's never experienced come already either? I also find it interesting that he's starting to open up to me. Until just recently, it seemed like he was reciting a self-help book. You might not experience these things for years to come. But unfortunately, we all have a crisis or two throughout our lives. When yours comes, I hope that you'll look back on these talks with an open mind. Hmm. It feels a little harsh to tell me that my life will be difficult in the future. But I guess that's a universal fact. Nobody sails through life without issue. I thank him for what he's told me, and especially for opening up to me. No worries, Delta. This is a two-way street. 
I may do most of the talking, but I try to mix it up. I want to talk to you, not at you. It's more personal that way. For example, now you know that I'm just like you. My advice may have seemed generic, but it came from experience, and that, as they say, is the best teacher. So I think we'll mix together well. Hmm. Let's talk about that during our next session, though. We're almost off the clock. I'd hate to get cut off in the middle of something like we did last time. Of course. Just be careful out there when you leave. Could be another protest. Or even worse. I realize that he's right. The hour of our session has basically flown by. That's probably a good thing, though. Wouldn't want these meetings to drag on. After thanking for his time, I decide to gather my thoughts before heading out. It is thought gathering time. Interact with each word to learn more about it. I think we knew that already. Upon interacting with both, your experience will continue. Oh, will it? Oh, will it? Is this the voice of the system telling me this? Argus. The inner workings of the corporation are shrouded in mystery. Nobody even knows who runs it, but theories run rampant. Currently, it must be in the hands of the Founder's child or children. It's been way too long to remain in the hands of just one generation. But no matter who runs it, their influence on society is clear. A world without the Argus Corporation would be awful. Excuse me. At least, that's what we think. All we can really do is speculate. Either way, the influence and power of the single corporation is immense. They have a monopoly on almost everything, and use it to maintain order. Could be worse. They could use their power for nefarious purposes. Not worth thinking about that, though. Not worth thinking about, though, as there are far more real issues at hand. Namely, the protests and the people living outside our city limits. Zeros. Do all Zeros live outside, outside of the city? In colonies? Let's find out. While the system is presented as mandatory, some people still dodge it. They have no score, no, I no identity, and live outside of the city in self-sustaining communities. They're known as Zeros. While originally a small group, they have since grown quite large. So is it that they have no score, like actually no score, or is it that their score is zero? Or maybe it's basically practically the same thing. I don't know. But it's fascinating that they choose, they're choosing to go off the system. And so now I understand what uh, what Isaac and Taylor meant by saying that this, this guy um, was born in a colony. So he was born with no score. Um, Jeez, and that's got to suck. It, it, it does. It does have got to suck having that chosen for you. Um, but some of us are in situations that we didn't choose. Like me, I I am as um, have no visions. But as they grow, so too does the size and scope of our cities. The Argus Corporation has slowly but surely been encroaching on Zero territory. They're running out of space, and the integrity of their communities is more and more at risk. Some people say that they deserve it, but I don't think it's so black and white. Either way, these protests aren't violent, 
and they aren't calling for any substantial change. Zeros simply want the ability to enter the city legally and purchase what they need to live. Oh. They can't, they, they are not even allowed to enter the city legally? That's terrible. They need this because the loss of space means they can't make enough on their own. I'm sure they'll reach a mutual conclusion, but it's odd how involved Argus is. They have such a sway with world powers. But, I guess as people say, they did save the world. Maybe they're simply collecting what they now believe is their reward. So what, what is the role of Argus here? What reward are they are they collecting? I mean I could assume I could only assume that they would profit from the expansion of the cities. Um But yeah, you know, what what is Argus doing here and how are they benefiting? How are they enriching themselves during this time of political conflict? I'm curious. Um, but that's probably not, like, the main focus of the game. It seems more to be a backdrop uh, on which the other events are going to occur. We shall see. Experience Supplemental Fragment. Needing a zero? Zero on the street a couple hours ago. He did? Wait, 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 wait. You go outside? <sighs> Funny. I had some errands to run, but he seemed hungry. Asked to eat some of the food I bought. Oh, that happened to me in Delta the other day. Yeah, I was there too. Felt kind of bad for the guy. He didn't know it was really true how they can't enter our stores. Yeah, they aren't chipped like we are. No ID to speak of. I really hope that you gave him some food, Dante. Uh, yeah, of course. I bought a ton since we're pre-gaming today. You know, I kind of feel bad. Partying while they're rallying for some basic necessities? Should have invited him over. Showed him what life in the city is like. Sheltering a zero and giving them access to city goods? Oh, I can literally hear your score going down, man. Ah, you know me. Just like bringing people together. Besides, be a petty crime. Nobody cares about those. Oh my gosh. Sheltering a zero and giving and share, sharing stuff that you bought in a store with them. A petty crime. I'm not even gonna touch that one. Sounds like a scandal to me. Fine, fine. I just wanted to do a good deed. How about you start putting out the snacks and booze then? This party starts in a few hours if you want to stick to your schedule. Sure. Wanna help when you get home? Not really, but I will. It's the least I can do, since you organized the whole thing. Dante being generous? Wow, this really is a special day. I'll stop by early so I can help you set up. Just let me finish a few more episodes of this show. Sounds good to me. And Delta, just sit back and relax. This night is celebrating your arrival. So, let's make it special. Oh, that's so nice. You know, we haven't really had any um, any personal interactions since, um, since we both confessed interest in each other, um, uh, myself and Isaac. Yeah, one we can all remember. Unless you go overboard again. Hey, bring that up one more time and you're going overboard. Ooh, drama! At least now I have some entertainment while I prepare. 
Hold on. Let me go make some popcorn. My suffering is an entertainment. <laughs> it really is. Hey, can I get extra butter on that? I've decided that calories don't exist this weekend. Sure thing. Just make sure to keep an eye on Dante. And don't stop fighting either. I'm loving the energy. This one next. Experience pivotal fragment. Intro speculation. Intro speculation. Nostalgia is like a broken mirror. Recreate the past and you'll end up full of cuts. Oh, well, that sounds mildly ominous, threatening. I throw my head back and take a shot. The alcohol quickly burns my throat. After a couple of coughs, I let out a noise that signals my satisfaction. I can't help but feel happy as a warm feeling rises within me. I guess Delta is a lightweight too. Looks like you have some competition, Taylor. Hey, it's not a competition if the victor is clear. <laughs> hundred bucks says I'd pass out before they do. Oh, now this is gonna be interesting. Here, let me get the music. We need a theme song for Taylor's Demise. Wow, have some faith, dude. As if your ego needs to get any bigger. If I could afford it, my money would go right on Delta. Wait, you can't afford it? I thought your books were bestsellers. Uh, yeah, they were. Anyway, what do you want to hear? Y'all okay if I put on some clays? <laughs> put on some clays! Yes! <laughs> I could go either way. You know, I heard he could too. <laughs> oh, really? You fit in well with us then. Uh, self insert. Whoa, 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 speak for yourself, man. We don't all hit on everyone we see. Yeah, I made sure to warn my friend about that. Meeting a boozed up tailor is certainly an, uh, <coughs> experience. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Please don't. Always gotta ruin my fun. But go ahead, put on some clays. Not very party-like, just sitting here in silence. Dante smiles and pulls out his phone. The speakers in the corners of the room let out a noise, signaling his connection. After a few moments of scrolling through his device, he decides on a song. Party time? Party time! Now playing Encore by Clays. He presses play with a wide grin on his face, and music fills the room. Isaac grabs the bottle of vodka resting on the table, and stands up tall. And that means more shots! He slides his shot, his, his shot glass across the table, in my direction. Dante does the same, but in Taylor's direction. Oh no, they really do want to test our tolerance. <laughs> Prepare for trouble! And make it double. He throws the bottle in the air and catches it with a flourish. We're making it up. <laughs> he walks over to me and fills up both shot glasses with vodka. A moment later, he does the same to Taylor, topping us off. Oh, another two for each of us, if that is, if that is what, what, what I'm picking up here. I tell him I'll do it, as long as him and Dante do it too. You have yourself a deal. Four for you, four for us. You really want us to pass out, huh? Don't think your friend would like being stood up. 
Hmm. <laughs> we'll pace ourselves, don't worry. Remember, we're not leaving for three more hours. So you're saying drink up? I'm surprised you haven't already. As if that was a direct challenge, Taylor and I both take our shots. Then, in one swift motion, we slide the glasses over to Isaac and Dante. Filling them up almost immediately, Isaac then strikes a thinking pose. Hmm. We should have a toast. Oh, to what? Taylor's inebriation is becoming clearer as he wobbles slightly. Oh, I love, I love the little, um, I love the influence that I can see coming from, um, from Eurodance artists like Manian, um, Itala Brothers, mainly, mainly, mainly Manian, and, and, um, I'm about to say Cascada, but, but I feel like Cascada's sound was definitely in a different direction from this song, but I'm, I'm, but, yes, I'm, I'm loving it. If the earlier wager were official, I guess he'd be winning. I live by many rules, but one has never let me down. Always let a writer make a toast. It's what they do best. Uh, yes, totally. All eyes are immediately on Dante. Wow. Uh, no pressure or anything? <laughs> Come on, it's an honor. Uh, it's my job. Uh, it's not a party trick, but uh, sure. Let me let me think of something. Him and Isaac both pick up one shot glass in unison. There's a pause for a few moments while Dante decides what to say. But after a little while of thinking, he seems to give up and laugh. <laughs> you know what? This one's just from the heart. Here's to getting wasted with the people that. Yeah, with the people that matter. And with any luck, that list will keep on growing. Taylor and I hold our hands up, like we were taking shots as well. We all say cheers, and they down the vodka faster, faster than Isaac poured it. Talk about getting a head start on the night. Buzz before supper time. Speaking of which, who are we meeting? You gonna tell us who this friend of yours is? Yeah, if I remember correctly, is it four o'clock right now? We, we better have a dinner. Nope. But honestly, I'm nervous too. I've never met him, so it's not oh just my you. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would never hype up an event at a new place. Hosted by someone I've never met. Wait a second. Hmm? Never even met him? Correct. And you think I move fast with guys. <laughs> hey, it's not like he's a stranger, man. He's just never been in town until today. But he's... He's obviously... Um, he's obviously someone of much more means and more... Uh, what's the word? enterprising than myself because I was a stranger um, kind of until moving in um, a week or two ago but we've been friends online for a while now trust me he's good no need to worry but I'm sure Isaac's taste in people he, Isaac has is a good um, um, has a good sense of discernment of character well, if you say so He's one, he, he's, let's say, um, three for three right now. <laughs> With the three of us in this group. Anyone who gives me free booze is good in my books. I just thought you met him before, but how much you've been saying. Nope. Just the anxiety making me ramble. Hence all the liquid courage we just ingested. Might want to switch to rum, though. Vodka's running dry. He shakes the bottle with an embarrassed laugh. We've already gone through a whole bottle? Wow. 
Isaac must have a weird definition of pacing. Rum? <laughs> I'm down. I'll go grab the cola. I think it's time to start mixing. The straight shots are really starting to creep up on me. With dramatic flair, he acts like he's passing out. Then, a moment later, his head rests on my shoulder. I laugh and exchange awkward glances with everyone else. Or maybe you could get it for me, Delta. <laughs> oh, I fear I've gotten a bit lightheaded over here. Oh no, the music stopped. Someone has to <laughs> someone has to press play again. I have no problem doing a favor for a friend, so I agree. But a temptation rises within me to mess with him before I get up. Looking down at him, I think of what message I'd like to send. Wrap an arm around him. I wrap an arm around him and give him a tight squeeze. The others look a bit surprised, but Taylor sounds incredibly happy. I tell you not to let go, but I really wanted that cola. Ah oh, yes, the master of romance. A lifetime of practice. Oh my gosh. A few chuckles fill the room and I, as I stand up and walk to the fridge. The cola is easy to find, even amongst the booze-filled appliance. When I make it back to the table, I notice that Dante is holding the rum. Man, I'm gonna miss this. <laughs> he sighs as he shakes the bottle, swirling the liquid inside. Well, we can always buy more. It's cheap stuff. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's not even anything special. No, not, not that. I meant all of this in general. Well, what does he mean by that? Sitting down with your best friends, getting drunk during the day, downing shot after shot like our bodies aren't starting to hate us. Oh, you mean youth. Yeah, but at least we made the most of it. Didn't you ask for a better group of friends? Yeah, you said it, Dante. Dude, I feel exactly the same way. Even though this is only the first time I've partied with you guys. I can't even imagine what life would be like without all of you. Just the thought of it is enough to keep me up at night. And it does. Oh? Finally confessing your feelings for all of us? So we're already at the sad drunk stage. No way. It's just we're so close now. But are we still in touch in any of your visions? I shrug, since it's pretty obvious that I've never had a vision. But the rest of them exchange worried glances with one another. They didn't have to say anything. I know exactly what they're thinking. Oh. That was a very noticeable music uh, loop, loop thing, point. <laughs> exactly. I, I can't get it off my mind. I think of you all as, as my family, but in my vision, you're not even an afterthought. That sucks. By now, Dante has fixed all of us some rum and cola. The mood in the room took a turn for the worse, and I stare at my glass. I'm not sure how I fit into this conversation. I'm definitely the odd one out. <laughs> yeah, being, being both the newest one to the group and also not having visions... What do I say? Hey, we're together now, and that's what matters. <sighs> Thanks, Taylor. If you're constantly worried about the future, We'll never enjoy the present. We could drift apart, yeah, but no point in just moping around until it happens. Isaac looks up from his glass with a smile. Remember what you said about foresight in the group chat? If we know we might stop being friends, then we need to make the most of it. And I don't know about you, but I think tonight is the perfect night for that. <laughs> I don't remember what he said about foresight in the group chat. You know what? You're right. But why 
do we have to drift apart? Who says we can't be friends forever? Uh, fate and quite <laughs> Well then, screw fate. I won't let anything take you away from me. Oh my gosh. I don't know if we're equipped to fight fate, man. And if well-wishing were a weapon, the world would be much better off. Let's just create some memories that we can revisit whenever we want. Just like I'm doing right now. Even when we're no longer together. Isaac's mood almost instantly reverses, and he holds up his glass. Now there's a toast. We touch our glasses together, and then take a large swig. <coughs> and shame on you, Taylor, <coughs> using my own words against me. I guess it's true what they say, though. Your own advice is always better when it comes from somebody else. We're all that creatures of self-doubt. Can be yes, true. That. Don't worry, Isaac. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not sure if we can beat fate. But I promise to put up one hell of a fight. That's the spirit. That seemed like a perfect end to our discussion. Moving on to more casual topics, we slowly sip our drinks. But this is the first time I've seen the more negative effects of Komorebi. A group of people realizing they might not be friends forever. There's something so liberating, yet terrifying, about that. It almost seemed like a rite of passage into maturity. But here I sat, with no vision to my name, and no input at all. As my new life kept going, I have no idea what the future could bring, and that thought alone was almost as liberating and terrifying as the alternative. Where are we at? We just finished the last one. Here. Um, oh god, the enemy's still not unlocked yet. And now I'm curious, can we revisit other fragments? You have already experienced this fragment. Oh, we can't. You have already experienced this fragment. Okay. Fascinating. Alright, let's move... Oh, let's do this one and then see if we can move on. Experience. Supplemental fragment. A weird feeling. I feel I've, we do we do need to move on. It's almost like we've reached the part in a story in a book when the what, what's it called? And when the narrative speed will slow down and, and we'll really zoom in on um, on exactly what is happening scene by scene instead of jumping around with these little vignettes. Let's see. Let, let's take care of this one, then. I'm on my way over. But admittedly, I'm a little bummed out. What happened? Also, we're almost set up for the party already. Well, I was really getting into this show. Like, the next episode was supposed to be all-out war. But instead of that, they focused on completely different characters. Just move to the other side of the world at the worst possible time. Yeah, that can really knock off the pacing of the show. Did it all take place in the same room? What? Yeah. What does he mean by that? That's a bottle episode, man. Bottle episode? And you thought Quantum Leap sounded weird. It's just something they do in the industry. It either kills the momentum or it becomes a masterpiece. Uh, plan to elaborate at all? Well, he mentioned they were going to war, right? They probably need to put a lot of money into that. You know, like CGI, music, all that fun stuff. 
Oh, I, I see what you're saying. It lets them put more of the budget into the important episodes. They typically reuse sets and focus on main characters with no secondaries. So what you're saying is that the next episode will be incredible. Well, they could be, but I don't know. I actually prefer the bottle episodes myself. A smaller, more intimate character study? Right up my alley. But I've never been one for fight scenes and explosions. <laughs> Hold on. You've changed the way I think about TV shows. I, I just figured every episode had the same budget. <sighs> Not even close. So that one episode with the fly in the lab? Bottle. What about the one where no one's ready? Big bottle and an instant classic. Sometimes they take the easy way out and just do a clip show episode. You know, highlighting all the best times those characters have had. I always thought those were just pure fan service. Yeah, I'd take a bottle episode over a clip show any day of the week. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, no, um, no one likes useless flashback episodes. Hey, uh, guys, what's up? Do you think we're in one of those? Right now? Oh my gosh, Meta. Uh, what are you talking about? I mean, actually, I don't know. I just had the weirdest feeling. Care to elaborate at all? It's already gone. Just lasted a few seconds. Honestly, I wouldn't even worry about it. Oh, I am absolutely going to worry about it. He's probably just been reading too many books. That is definitely not the case. Are you saying I don't read? I'm only saying it because you don't. Hey, what's the last novel you read, Isaac? I hate all of you. So, what comes next? Well, it looks like I might have missed out on the opportunity to experience these fragments this time around. But maybe next time. Well, let's see. Let's see what comes next. Oh, yes! But no! No! We've finished the demo! But right before something exciting happens... We know something exciting is about to happen. Hey, Clay's here. Just wanted to thank you for playing through this demo. It's been almost two years of hard work, and everyone involved has been super passionate, putting their all into everything. I think it really shines through, and I hope you enjoyed your time in the world of Komorebi. I sure did. I sure did, Clay's. I bet you're excited to get to the nightclub with your new friends, but that has to wait just a little bit longer. Though, the good news is that there's going to be a second part to this demo, equally as long as this one. Both of these demos combined will provide the entire first chapter of Komorebi for free. The game will be four chapters in total, so it's quite a bit of content to tide you over until we fully launch. I'll provide release details on part two soon. In the meantime, please use Komorebi Game to post about your experience. We'd all love to hear your thoughts and get the community going while we finalize part two for release. There are actually a couple reasons why I chose to release this demo in two parts. I know that after releasing it, there would be tons of people learning about this game for the first time, giving the entire world some time to play through it and get on the same page means that the turnout to the nightclub outing will be as big as possible. Wait, what does he mean by that? Isn't part two going to be the nightclub outing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But he, but he, he wants to rev up some steam and get people on the same page. And of course, that's four people... That's four people like me who typically, typically I am the slowest of, of gamers. Um, this happened to be an exception, because I really did love this demo. Um, but yeah, when, 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 when a whole game comes out all at once, it's like, it's going to take me some time to get through. So, um, so yeah, that's for people like me, who 
need some time to digest stuff and get all on the same page. I also kind of like the idea of marking our calendars for the date and time that part two will come out. That way we can all experience the same night on the same night. We've all been going through a tough time over the last little while. Let's have an awesome night out together soon. From Clace. And don't forget to tell your friends about Como Rebbe. Please consider pledging to the Kickstarter. P.S. And if you already did, then OMG thanks. Heart. Oh, and, and let's see. Is that it? That is it. Ooh, I like this. This means that I can replay it several times and really get to know it inside out. Um, because it, it's a, it's a very bite-sized demo. Um, I want to unlock the rest of those, the rest of those heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Like, did I lock them out because I, because I confessed romantic interest to Isaac? Um, is it because I approached, is it because I approached Taylor the wrong way in our first meeting? I don't know. So, there's, there's more to figure out here. Assuming that these three can be unlocked in the demo, and I, it, it looks like they can, so uh, uh, so I really want to figure that out. But that will have to be for next time. But thank you again for joining me on this part three playthrough of the Komorebi demo. This is the Komorebi uh, part one demo um, created by Clace. So you guys take care and have a good evening.